guys. Thank you for joining us. If you're online, um, you're awesome. I guess everybody's online. If you're on Facebook, thank you. We're going to be on Facebook, and I'm actually on um, Google Meet. So I record all these so we can kick it to our YouTube channel and blast it out to the world. I'm all about giving back as much as I possibly can during this time, and I would hope that that inspires people to do the same. Uh, I want to be a space where we can all um, gather into that better together moment. So if you want to, you can hop into the Google Meet, or you can still stay and kick it with us here uh, live on my Facebook page. I've been talking about books, guys, so I wanted to shift gears um, this week and really talk about the books that have changed my perception on things. I get this question a lot as um, people just get to know me. They're usually like, well, what, what makes you tick? What's like, how did you do that? What did you come up with that? The reality is, is that I, a long time ago, and I say a long time ago, a long time ago, that I'm gay, a long time ago, I was in an industry that as I was performing really well in that industry, people began to get promoted above me. And I realized a couple of things. One, it had a lot to do with my personality, my behaviors, especially on the business side of things. Um, I'm a super high eye personality. For those of you who understand the disc, um, I'm just very outgoing. I don't know if you figure that out yet or not, but I am. And so I watched people like me get passed over by um, – will just be a nice, more assertive personalities. And so I began to learn a little bit more about how I can be assertive with maintaining my own flavor of life, right? I still wanted to be able to do well. And in just business industry in general, I didn't want to get passed up because I was the guy who everybody loved, but not necessarily the guy that people wanted to have um, as a manager. So I just changed the way I looked at things. And the things I looked at changed. And so one of the biggest things that I did is I started reading. My goal is to read 52 books a year. Before that, I read about half a book a year. I just, not a, big, not a big reader, never was a big reader. I like to consume like movies, I like all the documentary stuff, I wasn't a big reader. And I just realized that there's a common thread between some of the top leaders in this world and they were all readers and they were all writers. And so I changed those two things about me. And so I started reading a ton of books and I'm grateful for it. It's changed a lot of my perspective on things. And so that's what I've been digging into this week is those books that have changed my perspective. So if I look at those who have really invested in my life, there's very few mentors that have invested in my life. The rest of them really are um, books. Today we're going to talk about Atomic Habits, okay? This is a newer book that I've started consuming. Um, I read it towards the end of last year. It's a great, great book. James Clear is the author of it, um, Atomic Habits. Um, I look at this word atomic, and the very first thing that pops out to me is that when I think about atomic and I look at atomic habits, I think big, right? Atomic. We think atomic bomb, at least me, right? I'm just giving you my perspective. And so as I looked at it, the idea is much, much different than what I had perceived when I saw the book, which is why it took me a while to really read it. I was like, I don't want like this big moment of changing my life. I want to be in these little spaces of, of, of correcting myself, like the way a plane, if you take a plane, it doesn't fly in a straight line to where it's going. The plane is correcting itself the whole way to make sure it hits its target, okay? Atomic Habits is actually about that. I didn't realize it, but atomic, small, tiny changes in our life that can make the biggest difference. And so I just want to share with you a couple of things out of this book. Again, I'm always going to encourage you guys that if you find something that I speak about in these spaces, these books, I'm just giving you Randy's version of the story, how it changed my life, things that you could probably put into your world immediately, especially if you don't have time to open the books and read. You still have the ability to um, at least get some of the, the to-do or some of the tasks out of it that can immediately bring change into your world. So I'm going to cover that stuff, but I, I encourage you guys to read it. It's actually an easy audible book. I have both and it's a really easy audible book. So let's do this thing. Atomic Habits. I love it. And I say that computer just went for that. Hold up. Fact. Technology. So one of the first things that I want to look at, um, it talks about the changing of behavior. Obviously, Atomic Habits is about getting new habits into our world that help us grow and become better. It's about the growth side of things. The other piece of that puzzle is getting bad habits out of our life, right? I think that's where most of us end up wanting help is how do I fix my bad habits? Well, one of the ways we fix ha bad habits is actually just changing our behavior. Once you have good habits, and we're going to talk about this in a moment, you can stack good changing behavior into that space and you can start actually relieving yourself of some of these bad habits because you don't have room for bad habits when your life is consumed by good habits. That's just true. If you want to question me on that, then call somebody else. 
but that's what I'm looking at in today. So how do we do this? Okay. The first thing is talks about the four laws of behavior change. Okay. So I'm going to just put four laws of behavior change because you can actually read the book. I'm going to do shorthand. It's just easier to write on the board that way. Okay. The very first thing is to make it obvious. Okay. You've got to be able to make it obvious. What does that mean? If I want to change my behavior and I want to move towards something good, it's got to be obvious. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's got to be in our way. I, one of the things that I had to do, man, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a healthy dude. It is not easy being healthy. The path of my least resistance is let me sit on a couch, let me watch a movie, let me do nothing. I hate working out. It's terrible. Nobody wants to sweat like it's torture. You're torturing yourself. And I get it. My sister-in-law, her relief in life is running. And she is filled to the core to run. I run because I don't want to be an old dude that's disgustingly like overweight, can't move, breathing heavy. I can't chase my kids around, my grandkids around. I'm not judging anybody. That's just me, my own perception. I hate it. So I put a rowing machine. I bought a rowing machine. I put it in my closet. Like I have to physically dance around this daggum thing to be able to get into my world. So I, I don't get to get around it. It's obvious. It's in my space. A lot of times when we are trying to create new habits, we get stuck into this mode first, making it obvious, getting our opportunity to, um, to make sure that it's intentional. It's, it's in our way. I just think about it in this case. Like a lot of people um, on this, I think, are, are, are going to be at least churchgoers at some point in the world. And I use this as an example all the time. If I were to ask you what the lesson was from church last week, most of us would have no idea what it was because all we really did was sat there, we listened, and we put zero things into action, okay? We sat there, we listened, put zero things into action. So our learning curve is just gone. We may recall something of like, oh yeah, oh yeah, he was talking about blah, 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 but it didn't change who we were. We didn't inspire any kind of change in us. Changing our habits is the same thing. We've got to be able to put action into place. If my habit is to avoid that moment where I want to grow, and it's not in front of me, I am going to avoid that moment. That's just what I've essentially programmed into my world. So when we look at this, we've got to be able to create things and make it obvious. Okay? Gosh, get accountability, and that'll help you make it obvious for sure. Okay. Second thing in this is you got to be able to make it attractive. Okay. Make it attractive. He's much better at explaining this stuff to me than me, by the way, guys. So if you want, by all means, this is this is Reader's Digest version. You need to really dig into this book if you want to understand how to really involve change in your world. But to make it attractive, guys, this is really simple. To make it attractive, it's got to be clear, and it's got to be compelling, and there's it's got to be personalized. I think that's one of our things that we, um, we miss is that we haven't really visualized what's going to happen, right? So if I want to learn a new language. Sorry, I got a little bit of a eyelash in my eyeball. If I want to learn a new language, right, this is one that I think is really interesting. A lot of people have the desire to learn a new language. Learning it just to have the skill set doesn't inspire me. There's no personal message. There's no growth in that. So it's not really going to drive me to move forward for the majority of us. Some of us may go, hey, I want to learn something. And so you just start learning it. I'm not that way. I've got to be able to have some sort of carrot dangling to move in that direction. And so you need to be able to visualize. So what do we do to make that a personalized message, a clear and compelling? When I learn Spanish, I'll be able to communicate with these group of friends, and I'm going to be intentional about building a relationship in a different space, right? Or whatever it may be. Like, I'm shooting from the hip on that one. But the reality is, is that everything that we want to do to create new habit in our life can really um, – can become stronger, right? We're, we're creating those laws to be able to move into a new habit space. We can do that when we have a clear, compelling picture, right? when it's personalized. I think one of the things that, um, why health is really important to me is that no matter what, I want to be able to, in my life, always chase a kid. I know it sounds crazy. I want to always be able to chase a kid. I love playing with my kids. They're so much fun. I watch my... Uh, friends and families members that are grandparents play with their kids. I want to be able to be the eight year old dude who's chased my great grandkids. I want to be that health for me. The reason why I stay healthy, the reason why I choose health, the reason why I eat health, two things. One, I always want to chase kids. I know that if I can't do that, then I'm missing out on one of the things that will be the most beautiful things in the world for me as I grow up. 
as I grow up. I should be already grown up, not though. And so that's a big piece of the puzzle. Now I actually have another great second piece of that puzzle, which is my wife. She's incredibly healthy. And so she helps me be accountable to doing that. And so you've got to make it attractive. And the way we make it attractive is to understand where we're going with the habit, right? It's got to be a beautiful thing. It's got to be a visualized thing. Okay. All right. So make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it easy. We have a really wild way about making things difficult when we create new habits. Make it easy. If you want to be able to have a new habit, reset your day to move towards that habit. You've got to make it easy. If I wake up every morning and I have to choose, right, in my brain, the willpower, we're going to go with the health side of things. I want to get up 5 a.m. and start working out every day. I'm going to be big buff and I'm going to be so good looking in my bathing suit. If I really wanted to do that, I'm going to make sure that like I have no obstacles in my way to get to the space to move into that action, right? How many of us wake up and we've got an alarm and mentally we've checked out. We've said, all right, so I want to get up at 5 a.m. So I'm going to set an alarm for 430, 440, 445, 446, 448, right? We've given ourselves the opportunity to already check out and choose. No, I'm not going to wake up. I'm just going to sift through these alarms. And so when the actual one hits, we've already conditioned ourselves to say no and to stay in bed. Set an alarm that doesn't have a snooze. You'll wake up or you won't. And if you don't, it's gonna throw a wrench into the rest of your day. Now, a lot of people will do this thing where they'll toss the phone across the room so when it starts getting it going off, they have to get out of bed. Mel Robbins has a thing where she, when she hears the alarm, she starts counting backwards from five because it has to create a response. Like our body wants to respond once there's a countdown, like a rocket going off. I'm telling you, you've created too many obstacles in your world. If you really want to create a great habit, you've already created too many obstacles in your world to get to that habit. If I wanted to create a habit of reading a book or reading the Bible or doing my quiet time or studying or meditating or all in any of those things that like spiritual or mental growth side of things, there should be a very clear path to get to that space. There's got to be a very clear path to get to that space. Because if you're walking over obstacles, you're going to not have the willpower when you get there to do it. And it should be already set. If you've got to be able to prep yourself 15 minutes before it gets started, you're going to be distracted. Okay? Our brains are a glutton for distraction. And so if you don't have it set up already, you're going to be distracted. I know it. I live this all day long. I have a set. I want to every single day come in here, do my little due diligence of what I want to do to grow, to read, to write. I've got a lot of writing stuff that I'm working on right now. If my coffee isn't already reset, that's a 15 minute moment for me to make coffee. Then I'm going to get distracted. I'm going to check my emails. I might be ready to go sit and read and write, but I've already used a portion of my willpower in that moment instead of being prepared to move right into the habit that I want. We got to make it easy. Sorry, I spent too much time on that one. And yet, I hope you're thinking about all the things that you could do to make it easier to create a habit. You put obstacles in your own way to be able to get to where you want to go. Okay? You've put obstacles in your own way to get to where you want to go. So, again, we've got to be able to make it obvious. We've got to make it attractive. We've got to make it easy. And the last thing is we've got to make it satisfying, right? D, make it satisfying, okay? This is it. It can look like a quadrant, right? So if you think about it, I know that uh, he wrote a, uh, a different little piece to um, how to kind of adapt this into the business. And he said, like, for the make it obvious, that's like a cue. Making it obvious is our cue. Moving into make it attractive, that's a craving. I can spell. Moving into the response, that's, uh, sorry, make it easy, that's a response. So there's a, the ability to respond. And then the last thing is uh, make it satisfying with the reward. Okay, so it's a Q craving response reward. That actually reads this way: Q craving reward response. Sorry, I threw that. In. I threw your wrench there. See if you're paying attention. So it moves like this. Okay, this is the first thing that I really began to dig into when I opened up this book because I always, hi mom, I always want to. Sorry guys, if you, I don't say hey to everybody, but my mom always gets credit when she shows up. It's my mom, so be okay with that. When I looked at this and I started understanding what the behavior change was going to be like, 
this simplified creating habit for me. There's another book that I really love called The One Thing. And The One Thing overly simplifies it even further. It's like, what's the one thing that I could do that would make everything else easier or obsolete? Well, this helped me to be able to stack and to understand, we'll get into habit stacking in a minute, to stack all of my best habits to be able to create better habits and to get rid of bad habits. And this was just a simple structure for me. So um, it is a way in which we can really start to, um, in my opinion, make it simple. We make it simple when we're doing this instead of trying to create this like 12 step program to be able to create a new habit and, and looking at the daunting task of doing it over and over for 60 days to be able to create it. It's interesting how often our 60 day habits end up still breaking because once we get there, we almost look at that as a destination and then we reward ourselves with bad habits, right? We reward ourselves with bad habits versus understanding the visualization of it, moving in a direction, having a clear and compelling message for ourselves. Okay. All right, guys. So that's the very first thing I wanted to cover. The second thing is the obviously the idea of breaking bad habits and the idea of breaking bad habits is just taking these things and, and inverting them. I'm going to write a different color here. I got blue. So, number two, break bad habits. Okay, so we're, we're really just reversing these. And so when you look at it, the first law is to be able to uh, make it obvious. The very first law on this one is to be make it invisible. Make it invisible, guys. I know it sounds like that's a dust statement, but make it invisible. Reduce your exposure. Remove the cues to your bad habits from your environment. Reduce the exposure. Remove the bad cues, right? There are cues that help you to move all day long. We have cued ourselves into this life. And so what can you do to remove the cues for the bad habits? If it's a workout habit that I have challenges with, man, make it absolutely simple to be able to get there. But if you have a bad habit of um, doing the wrong thing, being sedentary or whatever, like instead of choosing this, I actually choose to sit on my couch and watch the TV. Or instead of uh, choosing to read, I get in, I flip through my Facebook. Well, it's real simple. Reduce your exposure to those things. Keep your phone in your office and leave it there to plug in. Don't take it into your bedroom. So now that you're not watching your Facebook, you're actually reading or doing the thing that you want to do. I want to learn a new language. Well, I've got to be able to get to my computer to be able to learn my new language. Well, what's what's in your way? Because you can remove all the obstacles to get into that space, right? And so what can you do to make all of those things invisible? you got to be able to make them invisible. Second thing, all right, so we're going to invert, make it attractive. you got to make it unattractive. I know what you were thinking. Like, it's pretty brilliant. I never thought of that, about that. Make it unattractive. Make it unattractive. Many of us are trying to figure out how to make bad habits, but we haven't made it unattractive. We're kind of enjoying our bad habits. Things taste good. Things feel good. Rest is awesome. Sleep and laziness is wonderful. Not choosing things actually feels good. It's difficult to shape ourselves. And if you think about it, if you are creating a new habit, more than likely what you really want, what you're really doing in your life is creating growth. And if I'm creating growth, growth hurts. I want you to think about if you're a parent out there and you have a child, and that child is teething. Teeth jamming through your gums that never existed before hurts like the dickens like they're just miserable faces drooling crying snotty everything's hurting dude guess what if you're if you're trying to create a new habit for growth it's going to hurt our natural inclination is going to be avoid hurt our brains are like Ugh, avoid hurt and so you've got to be able to understand how to make it attractive right so you got to be able to move it out of your space you got to reframe your mindset Highlight the benefits of avoiding those things, right? Highlight the benefit of what it looks like when I avoid it. When I avoid one more chocolate, I don't have to run for another four miles to burn the chocolate out. If I avoid snoozing my alarm clock, then I wake up refreshed and ready to go. I find energy when I exercise in the morning. You know, whatever it is, I'm using those two things because they're easy for us to attach to. Obviously, there's a myriad of habits that this is still laws that will help us grow into that space. Okay, number four or three or B, C, whatever it is. The next, the number next. Okay, making it easy. I know, I know what you're thinking. Make it difficult, and you're right. Make it difficult. We make things too easy for ourselves on the bad habit side of things. Make it difficult. 
if I'm breaking a bad habit, I need to make it difficult to get into that space. I need to increase the friction, increase the number of steps in between you and them. It, like put physical barriers between you and the bad habits that you choose. Use a commitment device. This is one I was reading my notes. Use a commitment device to restrict your choices. You know, for some of us, uh, you can go in and turn your internet off. I don't know if you know this or not. You can turn your internet off. If that is a distraction from you choosing something to be good, don't plug your modem and guess what? You can't get onto it. Or put your phone in airplane mode. If we really want to be able to create new habits that are great, behavior change. If we want to break bad habits, it's about taking those things and turning them on their ear so that they're unattractive, they're invisible, they're difficult. And the last thing is they're unsatisfying, right? So make it satisfying, make it unsatisfying. Make it unsatisfying. One of the ways that you can do that, get an accountability partner. How terrible would it be for you to say that I want to change and yet over and over and over again, you have to tell somebody that you didn't do it. That would suck. At least it would suck for me. I would hate being a liar to my friends when they want to hold me accountable to grow. Create a habit contract. What would it look like if you had some sort of habit contract with yourself? I can, I, I'm going to do this and this is a contract with myself. I have to have integrity. So th this is it. It's, a, it's about going through in this atomic habit moment, creating new habits and breaking bad habits. The idea behind both of these though is that all of us right now, 100 bajillion percent, and I keep saying bajillion, I don't know why, we can go in and create a new habit by doing these things and we can break bad habits by doing these things. We can do something out of this list to create a new habit or to break a bad habit. Many of us have never even thought about creating physical barriers or removing physical barriers. I'm gonna use a really easy example for the workout habit thing. Alarm set, set the alarm, no snooze. Zero opportunity for snooze. So that if you snooze that alarm clock, it's going to ruin the rest of your day because you're gonna sleep beyond your alarm to be able to get up and do your job or to do whatever you need to do. You're gonna snooze beyond everything. Don't set a snooze. The alarm goes off, you either get to bed or you don't, okay? Number one, then all of my workout stuff is set out. It's right there, ready to go. I know, I know what I'm gonna do. I don't have to go dig into my drawers. I don't have to go dig into my closet. It's already set out, ready to go. My shoes, already prepared for me. Everything is right there, ready to go. I have a bottle of water set out, ready for me. So I don't have to go, oh, I need to go to the kitchen, get some water. We're not delaying. My phone is charging in my office, so it's not a distraction for me to pick it up. Everything that I need to do, I've cleared the way and I've made it simple to get to. And in my brain, I know and I've attached to me the feeling and the reason I visualized, I visualized myself winning. I visualized myself gaining. I visualized myself playing with kids in my front yard for the next 80 years because I'm a healthy individual who can do that. I get the joy of my grandkids, my great grandkids, my children, my friends, my, my friends' friends, my kids' friends, all that stuff. I get to be an active participant in life. Dude, that's a great visualization. Visualization. If I keep doing that and that spins for long enough, that becomes my new lifestyle. I don't have to worry about old habits. I've created a new one. It's behavior change that moves me forward in a direction. Most of us, though, we wake up and we start fighting ourselves from the very get-go. We hit snooze a billion times. We got to go dig into our drawer to find but the drawer didn't have my shorts, and so I got to go to the dryer to pull my shorts out of the dryer. And then I got to go back because I want to brush my teeth so I don't have stank breath. And then I got to go get a bottle of water. And then I come back to be able to get my shoes. Well, I didn't have socks, so I got to go back to the dryer to get socks. Gosh, 30 minutes into your day and you wanted to work out for 30 minutes is gone because you've been on a hunt. To be able to create new habits, to be able to break new habits, bad habits, we just we've got to be cognizant of it, right? There's no rocket science in this. It's just cognizant of what we want to do and the results we want to have, okay? So one of the things that I want to zone in specifically into this uh, when I was looking at this book and why it was really important to me. So because the habit books are, there's a bajillion of them. Bajillion, why do I keep doing that? There's a ton of them. I don't even know if there's a ton. There probably is a ton. There's a lot of them, right? That's my point. There's a lot of books out there. And so when I think about um, this book specifically and why it was registering for me beyond all the other habit books was the way it had conversations about triggers, right? So zone in specifically to triggers. I'm going to zone in on the idea of triggers, okay? We all have triggers. We also call that Q. So this is one of the first, change, first areas of behavioral change. 
we all have triggers for the reasons why we do things subconsciously, consciously, whatever it may look like. We all have triggers. It's already there. So it's not about do we or don't we have triggers. We all still, we, we all 100% have triggers in our life. The way we do things, we are cued onto the next step all day long. We are creatures of habit. If you think about it, how many of y'all wake up, you want satisfaction, you open your phone, you look at your likes on your Facebook, you look at your likes on your Instagram, you turn your phone down, you go and you right, go brush my teeth. After I finish brushing my teeth, I wash my face. After I wash my face, I go and I look in the mirror, check myself out, I get dressed. After I'm dressed, I go make my coffee. I mean, I know that you think that that's just your regular routine, but your routine is nothing but cues. Like you knew when to move into the next thing because of your cues. Think about how off you are when you go on vacation. It feels wonderful, right, to be able to be on vacation. Yet everything always feels off. People always do this. Man, it's nice to be on vacation, but I just can't wait to get home. Home is always so wonderful. I'm going to tell you, the reason why home is so wonderful is because your little alligator brain here is going like, this is fun to relax. And yet my routine is off. This is not normal. I feel unsafe. We begin to feel unsafe because our cues are gone. Our triggers are gone. We've got to be able to create new triggers. If you could create triggers in your world, it would help tremendously on making sure that habits, new habits or bad habits are broken by triggers. I look at my routine every single day, the way that I do things. I am a glutton for triggers. I am actually one of the most boring people in the world that you will ever meet between the hours of 5 a.m. to right about 10 a.m. I am the most boring person because I am 100% triggered. I know when I'm waking up. I know exactly what I'm going to do next. And I've cued myself. I've mentally cued myself into everything that I'm doing. I think really, I really put it into thought process, right? When I wake up, like when I get my cup of, cup of coffee and it's ready to go, I almost always, my computer's not even on until I get my coffee and I click and I start moving into that space. Well, now it, it's really interesting. When I'm on the weekend making coffee, I start to walk towards my office. It's just interesting because that has become a trigger for me to move into the next element of my day. I actually don't uh, sleep in anymore on the weekends. I get up and I keep my habits moving forward uh, Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday, Monday through Saturday, Sunday, all the days of the week because it's really important for me to be able to keep the triggers in my world. And I think about people who are really successful in business. I promise you they are all in that moment of triggers. They don't know it yet. Some of them do know it, but a lot of people don't realize when I walk in, I shut my door audible. I just clicked into my next thing. I hear the door click and it's an everyday thing. Well, once my brain, my Pavlovian brain, hears that trigger, I'm gonna move into what's next. So how can you create those triggers to move into what's next? This is going to be a scripted thing in your world. I know a lot of us want it to be different. We want it to have a little bit of a romantic moment. They're like, I'm gonna do this and it's gonna be great and I get to accomplish it. The story's gonna be awesome and everybody's gonna be invited. Confetti will fall from the heavens. I hate to tell you, it's going to be a scripted moment in your life. You're going to open up. You're going to have this like to-do list. And you're going to like, ugh. And yet when we visualize, when we've personally connected to what the future is going to be, it's easy to say yes. Okay? Triggers are a huge piece of the puzzle, guys. You've got to be able to get your space into triggers. And here are some, some moments for us. And, and it, it talks about this in the book. Again, I'm going to encourage you to go read this book. It's much better than the way I explain it because he's smarter than me, he's really awesome. Time, time is a trigger. At a certain time, this is one of the easiest things that we can attach to, location is a trigger. I know that when I walk into this space, the very next thing that I do is X. Space can be a huge trigger in our world, to be able to put triggers in there. Um, a preceding event can be a trigger. I know that once I get my coffee mug, the very next thing that I do is X. That can be a, a huge trigger as a preceding event. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second with habit stacking because good habits can help us create better habits and next habits and great habits. Okay? Uh, preceding event, um, an emotional state, right? When I feel X, I do Y. This is a big one, guys, because this is going to help us to um, create some consistency in um, some of the things that we want to create new habit changes for because of our emotional presence in it. So when I feel sad, instead of going for X, Y, and Z, I know that when I feel sad, go for a walk. When I feel sad, go go get sun. When I feel sad, go, right? When I feel tired, instead of sitting down on the couch, when I feel tired, I'm gonna go sit out in the sun. I'm gonna get re-energized. When I feel tired, I'm gonna go take off my shoes and put my feet in the ground. I'm gonna get planted, 
whatever it may be. There's a billion, I almost did bajillion again. There's a ton of things. There's a lot of things. There's things, things are there for us to be able to trigger. When X happens, we move into Y emotionally. The, the challenge is that we default a lot of times to our emotional status. We give it too much clout and we allow it to steal our power. We allow our emotional state to steal our power. We can still choose something different. And if we're mentally um, tapping into that, right? If we're cueing ourselves, when I feel happy, like let's even look at that. When I feel happy, that's an easy way to start doing a new habit that feels great. Man, when I feel happy, I'm gonna go read two pages out of a book. Well, now all of a sudden, every time I smile, I'm like, man, I'm craving knowledge, right? I've created the trigger to be able to help inspire me to do something better, something greater, okay? Ha triggering is a big deal. Um, and the last thing is going to be other people. There's a lot of great strength and solidarity. If I know that I want to do something different about my life and there's people who are with me, they can 100% be triggers in my world. Or it can be as simple as like a visual cue. If I see somebody, I know that that should inspire me to do something differently. If I am one of my great things that I'm doing right now in my office, I watch, um, all of the people who have routines walking around my cul-de-sac because I'm staring out the window into the cul-de-sac. If I really wanted to create something different, it'd be really easy for me to look out there and say, well, every time I see on Tuesday, when I see the garbage truck, that's going to be my cue to take a break. I'm just going to go walk the cul-de-sac three times, you know, something easy. But then now I've got a visual cue or there's people in my life. Like when I see Adam, I know like when I see Adam, it's becoming a habit now, which I love. When I see Adam, because he's the most active, Willow's active, but Willow's all over the place. She's nuts. I love her. But Adam's really intentional about time together. So when I have the time and when I've given him the time to see his face, it doesn't matter where I'm at in my project. There's not a, hey, let me finish this up. My computer screen closes. My phone goes off. My iPad goes off. I shut it all down when I see him because that's the best thing for me. That's a habit that I want to create to show him. You have more importance in my life than this book, than this work, than this everything. Okay. So triggers, we got to be able to put triggers in our life. What it's almost like the hunger games, right? I know that um, many of you have already watched this dystopian moment because we're COVID being saturated and we've gone through and we dug into the whole uh, uh, hunger games. Like which district are you in? Well, at the, the last book or the fourth movie, they're moving through the capital city and everything is setting off triggers of these nasty things. What would it look like if you put your booby traps in your life that are just triggers to do something great? What happens if you put booby traps in your life to do something great? If you want to write letters to people to make them feel good about you, well, your desk should be set with the stationery so that it's obvious. Put the triggers in your world and help you move into those better habits, okay? It's a big deal. Um, I want to read this section from the book, though, for you. And this is before you choose your habit cue. No matter what cue you choose for your new habit, there is one important thing to understand. The key to choosing a successful cue is to pick a trigger that is very specific and immediately actionable, okay? No matter what you're trying to do, the key to choosing a, su a successful cue is to pick a trigger that is very specific and immediately actionable, right? I've given you some generic examples, but it's got to be, for your world, immediate and very actionable. Um, and this is a, just a for example that he writes. For example, let's say you want to build a new habit of doing 10 push-ups each day at lunchtime. You might start by choosing a time-based cue, saying something like, during my lunch break each day, I'll do 10 push-ups. This might work, but it's not very specific. Do you do your push-ups at the beginning of your lunch break, at the end, at any time? Alternatively, you could create a cue around a very specific preceding event that happens right around your lunch break. For example, when I close my laptop to leave for lunch, I'll do 10 push-ups. In this case, the very specific action of closing the laptop is a perfect trigger for what to do next, your 10 push-ups. There's no mistaking when you should or should not do your new habit to kick off the new habit loop. As always, self-experimentation is the only real answer. Play around with these five habit cues to see what works best for you. I, I like that idea, right? I've been dancing around saying that, but for us, it, it really is. Like, If I want to do something, a lot of us say, when I wake up, I'm just going to run. It's like, no, no, no. Do something different. Give yourself specific triggers, specific cues to get there. When I wake up, I'm going to, you know, whatever it may be. This example is much better than anything that I can make up off the spot. Like if I want to do 10 push-ups every day at noon, it's like when my lunch break starts at 10 and I shut my laptop, the very first thing I do is get on the ground and do 10 push-ups. 
that's specific. So we have a cue that's specifically helping us move forward. Triggers are very specific and immediately actionable. Okay, sweet. You know, this is a lot. I hope you're gaining something from this. Obviously, I'm only giving you a very small summary of this book. I hope some of you are going, I need this book in my life, man. Randy's great and all, which thank you, by the way, for saying I'm great. Randy's great and all, but this guy's probably brilliant. I should be able to consume from him. And I don't, I don't know James. I don't get any credit for this. I'm just really bringing you the books that changed my life. And I actually have given this book away quite a few times. I think this is a book um, of, on habits that's the best. It's the best book on habits. There's a lot of great ones. This is the best one, I believe, on habits, okay? The fourth thing, I'm going to write this one in Doodoo Brown. Habit stacking. Habit stacking, okay? This is really easy. The concept is super simple. I've talked about it a couple of times. Habit stacking is just taking my good habits that I already have and interlacing new habits that I want. So I already have a habit of when I wake up, I'm going to read. And I know that when I read, I'm 100%. I'm, I'm already cued into that. Well, if I want to create a new habit, I'm going to splice in between there. When I shut my book, the next thing I'm going to do is my 10 push-ups. Or when I shut my book, the very first thing I'm do, going to do is to meditate. Or when I shut my book, it, right so now i've got this new ha this this habit that's already there i don't have to think about a new trigger i don't have to create something new i'm just stacking good habits together and it becomes this great train this chain reaction of my whole day is set up to be moving in the right direction of the things that i desire most because i have great habits already so habit stacking is a real simple concept guys um, i want to talk to you about like there's a science behind it it's called synaptic, synaptic pruning, and he talks about this. There's a phenomenon that happens when we age called synaptic pruning. Synapses are connections between the neurons in your brain. The basic idea is that your brain prunes away connections between neurons that don't get used and builds up connections that get used the most frequently, right? So if I have room, I've pruned away all the stuff that I don't really need in my life. Now I've got room to be able to create some new habits. So the things that I do the most my brain attaches to the things I do the least it cuts those things off which is why a lot of our short-term memory is like um, interesting because like those are just things that our brain says you don't need you don't need this you're not doing this all the time but yet I can remember like some of the most random stuff in my life well it's because of the repetition like we've given our brain that repetition it's hard to cut those things off and so when you look at habit stacking it's just synap synaptic pruning easy for you to say as it builds, and so as we've, come, as we've covered, your brain builds a strong network of neurons to support your current behaviors. The more you do something, the stronger and more efficient the connection becomes. Um, you probably have very strong habits and connections that you take for granted each day. For example, your brain is probably very efficient at remembering how to take a shower each morning, or to brew your coffee, um, or to open the blinds when the sun rises, thousands of other habits every single day. You can insert new behaviors in the middle of your current routines uh, for example, you may have a morning routine that looks like this. Wake up, make my bed, take a shower. Let's say you want to develop a habit of reading more each night. You can expand your habit stack and try something like wake up, make my bed, place a book on my pillow, take a shower. Now when you climb into bed each night, a book is already there waiting for you. So I've created a, I've spliced in a moment of habit in between all the things that I said that I was going to do already. So habit stacking is, I think, one of the biggest things. It's not a we don't have to take a whole lot of time to understand what it looks like in this or this. A habit stacking. You want to create a good habit, put it in the middle of something that you know you're already doing well. Okay? Put it in the middle of something you already know that you're doing really well. That's the easiest way to start creating some new behavior. Creating a new behavior loop. He talks about this a lot, right? We talk about the consistency. The loop, the consistency, the 66 days, developing a habit. Okay? The last thing that I'm going to say is that... Help me again. These are all the things that help me attach to creating new habits in my life and building great strong habits. I am literally doing this on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis in my world. I don't create resolutions. I create new habits that move me forward. Okay. This is why and how I do that. The last thing I'm going to toss out there, we find a great color. We got this one. Smell it. What do you think it smells like? Wrong. It's like raspberry or something. It looks purple, doesn't it? Don't it? It looks purple, don't it? Good old vocabulary, Randy. Grammar. All right. Fifth, last thing. Habit tracking.
one of the hardest things is to track our habits. It just is because it's different. It's new. And then we beat ourselves up. We missed two days and we're like, oh, shit, I forgot I was doing. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I was doing this. I was trying to. Ah! Don't beat yourself up. Create a habit tracking system that's simple. It's got to be overly simple for you. Create a, track, a habit tracking system. And the idea behind this is just to get to gamify it, right? If you understand what I mean by that, gamify it. Make it a competition. The competition is don't break the chain. Get a paper calendar. I don't know if you all know what that looks like anymore. Um, paper, these things right here. I know that you're confused right now. Paper is still a thing. Paper calendars are still a thing. Shout out to Amy Lippincott, who still uses her paper calendar for everything she does, even though I want her desperately to get into her Google Calendar. Paper, calendar, X's. It's easy. Simple tracking. We don't need to overly complicate it. Now, you can make it as difficult as you want, especially if you see personalities who want to go through everything. Amy, you just got a shout out. I saw that you're watching. But one of the easiest ways you can really create a habit tracking system is just overly simplify calendar, put X's in it, and just don't break the chain. Your goal, your gamified moment is don't break the chain. Okay? These are the things that changed my perspective on creating habits. I wanted, in my world, the overly romanticized moment of creating these great new habits in my world. And I get to stand and say, look at me and what I do. And it's awesome. And it's because I've conquered the world. It's not. It's simpler than that. Because I put these in routine in my life. I create triggers and I make sure that every single day I'm moving in those directions. That's it. And it's consistency. It's the loop that continues to move over and over and over again. It has nothing to do with anything that I'm phenomenal with. I'm not. I'm really not that great. I just regurgitate a lot of things really loud and obnoxiously. And you just believe me because I'm loud about it. This is our moment, though, if you are looking at all of the ways in which you can create new growth moments in your world. It's all in habits. And the way we move in habits has to be systematic. Our brains have been programmed to keep us away from things that hurt, from fear, from danger, from all of that stuff. Growth is a very difficult thing. It's easier to not grow. Our brains will keep us away from growth until we begin to cue ourselves like this, until we begin to make things attractive, until we visualize it, right? Until it becomes very real to us. It's not going to happen. Breaking ha bad habits is really as simple as like turning it on its ear. I've got to make things unattractive. I've got to put obstacles in my way. We just choose not to do it because having bad habits is fun. That's it. Having bad habits is fun. It's self-satisfactory. You've got to be able to break those things. We do that a lot of times with triggers. Easiest way we can do it is triggers with habit stacking. And then attract it. Just don't break the chain. If you can do these things in your world, even if you don't read the book, you're going to start moving in the right direction, guys. Okay? I believe that when we all can look at change and make it simple, change becomes easy. I think change becomes hard because we begin, instead of uh, making it simple, we've overly complicated it. My health goal, well, it's going to take time. And I don't want time. I want instant gratification. It's going to take discipline every single day. Well, I don't want to do that. Some days I want to drink my beer. Some days I want to eat my candy. Some days, um, I've got to be able to go do something differently. So now I've got to throw my routine off. i got to start a new routine to go work out. Blech. i got to work out, which means i got to get sweaty. And at some point, instead of being sweaty, I've got to actually cool down long enough to be able to go take a shower so I don't feel like a pig all day long with, like, a greasy face. Yeah, see, we do this to ourselves. We make change so difficult because of all the obstacles, all the hoops, all the hurdles. Change is really simple, and that's what I love about Atomic Habits. It overly simplified everything. Every single day I can take a little piece and move in the direction of what I know is going to make me a better human being. It's going to fulfill me personally, and it's going to give me some worth in my life. I love this, and I love this, and this was something that was really important to me. This is a book that changed my world. So, Atomic Habits by James Clear. I'd love to hear um, from you guys. I know that we covered a lot of material, so I'd love to hear from you. If there's anything that you want to say, something that like really spoke out to you, if you're on Facebook, I know that you can't speak loudly, but you can actually type into that little bad boy. Um, if you are on our Google Meet, um, I'd love you to be able to share. I've got uh, Crystal over there. She'll make sure that she kicks um, any of the questions out loud over our way. Um, 
But yeah, I'd love to hear from about four or five people. What spoke out to you? What jumped out to you? What's something you can immediately pull into your business? Um, what's something that you can pull into your life? Um, maybe you're already doing something that's pretty significant. So this is my time to be quiet and just to listen to what you guys have to say. This is our moment of growing together. We're better together because of multiple reasons. And one of the ways is because we learn from each other and that we have solidarity in our growth. Okay, let's hear it. Well, Randy, as always, thank you. I just purchased a book yesterday, so I just flipped through like that very first page. Um, and there's a lot of things in there, like that you were saying, you know, just breaking the habit. It's hard. It is. It sometimes it gets to where, you know, you get too comfortable doing the same thing, like the routine. And I guess that's one of my things that I'm really having a hard time trying to break the routines. You know, but I have a friend that he just, he went all out, quit school and started doing investing. And I mean, that's great for him. But the, one of the things that he told me, and I try to implement it, but then I fell back into my old ways is I don't have an alarm. So my alarm is on my phone okay. and I keep the phone next to my bed. It's just easy to reach, you know, just snooze. So he was like, well, why don't you put your phone to charge across the room. That forces you to get out of the bed to turn off the alarm. And once you're out of the bed, it's really hard. Well, at least for me, it's really hard to go back to sleep. So I tried that, but then, you know, like this week, my husband's taking vacation. So it's like, he wants to sleep in because he wakes up at 4.45 every day. So I'm letting him sleep, but then at the same time, I get caught up in the middle and I'm sleeping later. Yeah. So it's like, okay, now I have to rethink. And you know, as like you're saying, put in the barrier there, taking those yeah. things out of our lives and bringing in the things that are going to uh, make us achieve those goals. So, yeah. I mean, I really yeah. wanted to be here today because like I said, yesterday we went to Tario for some stuff and I saw the books. I was like, oh, I don't find the other one, but I'm going to take this one. I so, well, I, I, wanted, I want to speak to a couple of things there. Um, one is that there's always a different way, right? And I think you already know that. That's a dust angry. You've already even spoke about that quite uh, a little bit right now. Um, but when I look at um, doing something different, I was this way too because Ellen actually is not an early riser with me. She gets to be able to sleep in a little bit as far as the kids allow her to. And she's a stay-at-home mom. She does get some luxuries um, of rest, which she needs desperately. So I don't want to intrude on her ability to rest so she can be the best version of her. For our kids, that's what I need is for her to be the best version of her for the kids. And and obviously, then I get the best version of her because she's relaxed. Right. So I don't want to have an alarm going off and off and off. And so and, I, and I'm telling you right now, she would be like pi piping in right now saying, you're a liar. You're, you're not actually waking up. I hear your alarm going off all the time because right now I'm I'm having challenges getting into a new rhythm. So I'm in the midst of all this right now. Uh, I moved from a my phone as an alarm to uh, Alexa as an alarm. Um, one of the things that I like about her is that she um, will flash. So like I usually see sleep facing my alarm, and so she'll flash. And so like that little pulse of light actually hits me in the face, and it wakes me up, but it's not big enough to wake anybody else up. So uh, the other thing that I did in the past is that I would actually use my phone, but I would set all my alarms to vibrate. And I would tuck the phone actually underneath my uh, pillow so that when it started going off, it would it would like actually vibrate underneath my pillow. So that it, would, it would wake me up that way because I want to be able to, like you said, honor our spouses. The other side of that, though, that I will tell you, if you are looking to get better and you're wanting to grow and be better, your spouses will be OK with it if you follow through. If you hit snooze four times and your alarm's going off four times, they're like, dude, what the crap? Either get up or turn your alarm off. This is stupid that's gonna be their reaction, right? So if you really want to change, then you've gotta be able to do the change. I think they will respect the change and be okay with the inconvenience of, oh, it's 4 a.m., what are you doing? And then I'm, at, I'm back asleep. But if it's like, ah, oh, it's 4 a.m., what are you doing? It's like, ah, oh, it's 5.15, what are you doing? Ah, oh, it's 4.45, what are you doing? Oh my gosh, could you just turn your alarm off? Will you just get out of bed, right? It's that, it's the, it's our, when we don't follow through, I think is when we lose respect with our spouses. Yeah, and it does sound familiar sometimes. They're like, are you going to get up? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I just flipped through the first pages. So, I mean, and, and I'm really eager to 
And I guess when you start talking about, you know, you went from reading half a book in a year to not wanting to do 52 books a year. My goal for this year was at least to read 12 books. I'm two down. Uh, so yeah. and now that I have more time on my hands and my kids are older, 11 and 17, they don't bother me. They leave me alone. I see them three times a day. What's for lunch? What's for breakfast? What's for dinner? That's it. <laughs> then I had the time to actually invest in reading and I'm having a hard time. Well, I was having a hard time until you mentioned the books. What kind of books like is that a good book for me to read? Like I question that a lot. Yeah. No, well, here's it. I will tell you this. If you're creating a new habit with reading, this is my perspective on this because I want you to feel um, a little bit confident in what you're reading is difficult for most people, right? I'm just going to like, that. just, it is what it is. There's a lot of people who do not enjoy reading. That's just true. And we're making it easier to not read. Audible, like YouTube, uh, documentaries, movies, all that stuff we can consume it without ever having to read a book. I will tell you this. Have some of those books laced in there that are your favorite books so that then you get a um, almost a reward from the fact that you're about to read something and attach to something that you already love so it's easy um, because you still gain knowledge understanding of grammar structure sentence worth vocabulary all that stuff is still thins out of books even if they're not books necessarily on content that's um, uh, like necessarily like changing me or building me or it's some books for entertainment is still okay because the vocabulary, the grammar, the writing, the, the professionalism that can come from reading and other people's writing. So have some books that you love laced in there and don't feel bad about rereading a book. If I want to be able to, I read zero books and I want to get to 12 books, I need to have some things in there that will help me win. I need to splice some things in there to help me win. And the other thing I would say is that like, know, know like where your true um, abilities are and that's not right, wrong, rude, any of that stuff, there's no judgment. But if I want to start reading 12 books a year, I'm probably not going to choose the Chronicles from the, the Chronicles of Narnia. I'm going to choose uh, At the Shrugged. I'm going to read the whole, um, gosh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of all the large books, right? These thousands of pages books. Right. Like, I'm going to start with those because I can't get through those in the short amount of time that I have to do it. So I have some of the short books in there too. Um, the one that I talked about yesterday, uh, The Carpenter, is a really easy book to read. Um, uh, Donald Miller has a new book that I'm digging through about marketing. Um, I started reading it yesterday. Um, I probably have about another hour and a half of reading and I'll be done with it. Now I read a little bit faster because I've got practice of this, but you could get through that book really fast. So, so splice some books in there that like, um, that will be quick reads, but don't feel weird or bad or any of that stuff to read books that entertain you because there's still growth in that. Um, read books that are short because there's still growth in that. Read books that you've already read before because there's still growth in that. Like the, the goal is to create a habit of reading. Once you get that habit going and that cycle is moving, um, I think you'll find your natural evolution into the next books that will help you be better and all that stuff. So I love that. I think it's awesome. Take your time and, and do it right. Do it and stay, stay consistent with it. That's awesome. What else, guys? Um, I know. So Nicole said that she uses her paper calendar with the green X's. Don't break the chain. Um, yeah, go find your, your – I was going to say freaking. Go find your freaking green calendar. Put the mexes in there. Don't break the chain. What else, guys? I'd love to hear from a couple other people. Liz wrote, Audible is a great squeeze in when driving or working out or going on a walk. I love the squeeze in. And Liz, I would encourage you and anybody who does the Audible stuff, find where your intentionality is, right? If we really want to be able to use that as a source that gives me growth, that feeds me, then there should be something that happens from it. So what can I do to make sure that like when it's off, I make a quick note of the actionable item that I put into practice, right? Reading just to read is a great, 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 great habit to have, a little great skill to have, but we want to be able to make sure that we're just not digging in and reading a lot of information to make our brains bigger, but that we're putting it into action. So find ways in which those are actionable things. So if you find, if your habit is to fill in the gap, find ways that once that gap ends, what can, what's the action that I can take to move forward that, that I can put immediately into my world? What else is going on out there, guys? I'd love to hear anything else. I got about three more people. I'll wait. It's going to be good. I can drink my coffee. I talk all day long. <laughs> my, I'm reading my note. Mom said my brain goes so fast. That's a true statement. You should be around me all day long. Ask Crystal. It's very, very true. <laughs> what else guys 
I'm going to give it a second. If you're just joining us, I'm going through the books that changed my life, my perception on things. Uh, one of the books I'm talking about today is Atomic Habits. Uh, Monday, I did A Million Miles in a Thousand Years by Donald Miller. Yesterday, I did um, The Carpenter by James Gordon. Today, I'm looking at Atomic Habits, which is, in my opinion, one of the best books on habits and creating new habits, breaking bad habits. Um, and and I, again, Atomic Habits is awesome. James Clear, brilliant, brilliant dude. I couldn't keep up. <laughs> That's all right. It's a recording, Mom, so you can watch it over again. What else, guys? I'd love to hear it. If you're just joining in and you've never actually, uh, you may not have known exactly what I talked about, but you have read the book Atomic Habits, you still also have space to chime in um, if there's anything that, that really made a difference for you in our conversations today or that you've read the book before. I love that Fabioli went and picked this up yesterday. Um, we're going to wait. We're going to get three more people to jump in here. I know it. I know people want to. I'm even looking at you. I'm seeing you right now. I know who you are. I know who's on this call. So you can't get away from it. I feel like this is the moment where Crystal feels awkward enough that nobody's saying anything and she's about to pipe in and, and give us a great, a great little moment. Bird's beeswax, chapstick, for all your chapstick needs. Just kidding. I need some sponsorships, dude. That'd be awesome. What else, guys? Okay, so I guess I will. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so um, I liked where you said the physical barriers, like just get away from the distractions that cause bad habits. Um, like just putting a barrier, taking away, that's something that like I plan to put into action is like setting my phone away from me at night so it's not a distraction and I'm not getting on that. I think just putting putting things into action, like – um, I've been sitting here making lists of like what I plan to do to actually put these, these things into action. What is going to help me? So. Yeah. I love it. Well, it, and when you write it down, it becomes real. If it's in your brain, it doesn't. So like, that's a great, I think just simple thing you can do. Just write it down. That's the start of all of this writing it down because it comes up. I love, so my aunt Linda, I uh, love listening to these types of books on my way home from work to wind down and clear my mind. Um, I love that you actually said that, Aunt Linda, because a lot of times I think this is the practice that we should all be able to put into our world is like, at what point do you clear it out? At what point do you clear it out? So we get so much going on all day, every day, and especially right now, COVID stuff has created a lot of chaos in our world. Our rhythms are off. So what are you doing to do exactly what she's saying right there? What are you doing to actually pull that veil away to clear your brain and to get into a space to where the people who are around you that love you the most get the best of you? Because of what you just said, you said when you're on your way home from work, which means you're going home to your family. If you're going home to your family, they need to get the best of you. What does it look like to create a habit that makes this a moment for you to clear your brain? What can you do to clear your mind to be able to make sure that you're going home for people to get the best of you? I bet they get the best of you, Aunt Linda, when you get home if this is what you do every single day. I think that's awesome. You got to be able to make sure that this is all actionable in our world so that we can keep moving and going towards growth, okay? All right, if there's nobody else that wants to pipe up, I'm okay with that, but I, I want to make sure I reiterate the reason why I ask and the reason why I dig into this is that when we're together, even in this digital space, even in this virtual world, gosh, when we hear the struggles of other people, it gives us confidence that we can move forward. When we see the victories of other people, we know what's possible, right? We get the opportunity to be able to listen to other people's growth, what they're gaining from it. It helps us to know where we can move next. And for some of it, it's just the really brilliant things that pop out of our brains. Um, yesterday was a great example of that. We waited and waited and waited. And at the last minute, the conversation that we had around care was really phenomenal. And so this is a moment to be together, to grow together, because for just doing this for selfish gain or to be able to, like, just make our brains smarter, there's no, there's no gain in that. We've got to be able to get what we need, put into action, learn, grow, and then share it with the world. It's about sharing. This is a moment to be together. Sometimes remember you've broken a habit. Don't put it off. Yeah, I like that. Immediate. So it is the immediate moment, Kimberly. That's absolutely true. It's the immediate moment. Okay. Y'all are awesome. Immediacy. What can you take from today? Put it into your world. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. Y'all are awesome. If you need anything, by all means, you're welcome to call. Email me anytime. If you don't have my number, um, email me and you can get it that way. Randy Olive at kw.com. Y'all are awesome. Be amazing.